Myself and a buddy on my squad responded to an alarm. The incident location was an old office-type building that had been converted to doctor's offices. There was a pharmacy attached to it. Our dispatch received a motion signal from an upstairs office. Key holder arrives on scene and we go in to secure the building. The stairs were locked behind a door that, of course, the key holder didn't have keys to, so we took the elevator up to the second floor, not the most tactically sound option, I know. Elevator opens to a pitch black hallway. Except for one overhead light at the end of the hall. We start checking doors, and so far all are secured. We get to the last office, and sure enough, the door is unlocked. We make entry and observe it to be an unused office. The door opened to a sizable waiting room and reception area. There were about 10 or 12 exam rooms, all cleared with no hiccups. We exit the office and immediately, something seems off. That is when I realized the overhead light at our end of the hallway that had been on was now off, replaced by another light over by the elevators. I look at my squad mate and he is completely white. I ask him what is wrong, he says, weren't all those doors we just checked closed and locked? I tell him yay, so buddy says, well now they're all standing open. Sure enough, all the offices down the hallway we had just checked were now standing open. Pucker factor sinks in at this point. So we start clearing offices and securing offices. We finish the last office, and on our way out, just before we turn the corner to get into the waiting area, the main door just slams shut. Then, our radios start going nuts with some kind of static feedback. Now I just want to get the hell out of there. We get back in the elevator and head down to the first floor to make contact with the key holder again. However, key holder is nowhere to be found. I contact dispatch and request a callback number for the key holder so I can advise him of what we found. Dispatch states that the key holder was still en route to us and was advising an ETA of 5 minutes. I advise dispatch that we had already been out with the key holder. Dispatch requests I give them a call. I call dispatch and she tells me that there is no way we were out with the key holder. She states that the alarm company had only just made contact with one. Eventually, the real key holder arrives on scene and I ask her about the man that had let us in the building, the first key holder. She asked me to describe him, so I did. She states that that sounds like one of the doctors that used to lease the office on the second floor at the end of the hall. She then states that he had committed suicide at his summer home several days ago. I used to work for a private police slash security firm as a patrol supervisor. On one of my patrol routes, we had a huge church that was also a private day care and kindergarten. It was my responsibility to clear and secure the building every night between 3 and 4 a.m. due to recent instances of doors being found left open in the morning. In the early 1900s, the building was a skullhosu and supposedly a fire killed several children trapped inside. I didn't know any of this prior to working for the company. I only lasted about a week on this route prior to requesting that the church be moved to earlier in the shift. Several extremely creepy things happened while assigned to the church, my first night there. I had just walked down the very long main classroom hallway to clear all of the rooms and when I turned around to walk back up the hallway there was a red balloon floating in the middle of the hallway that was definitely not there prior. In the old pastor's office there was a lamp shaped like a lighthouse that sat on a table in a large window. When I would pull up to the church the lamp would be the first thing I would see in the office window. It was always turned on. However, when I would go to check slash lock the pastor's office from the inside, the lamp would always be off. When I would get back into the car to leave, the light would be back on again. Point one weekend, the church was having a bake sale and the kitchen was full of plates of cookies and brownies, etc. There had been a note left on the door telling us, security, 
that we could help ourselves to anything in the kitchen, within reason. I cleared the kitchen and noticed a large plate of chocolate chip cookies. I continued past the plate to clear the rest of the kitchen and when I went back to the plate of cookies, there were only three left where there had once been at least a dozen or more, and I also had the usual phenomena of previously closed slash locked doors being found open just seconds after closing and locking them. Another officer that filled in for me one evening quit the very next day because he reported that as he was checking the main chapel, the pipe organ started playing itself. My uncle was the sheriff of a small town and he told us this story. Back in the day, there was a local reporter, Bob. He would always show up at every major police activity like big car wrecks, fires, or anything worth reporting in the local paper. Bob liked messing around with people by flicking them behind their ears. Unfortunately, he had bad lung cancer and died pretty suddenly. His wife buried him, against his wishes, he wanted to be cremated. For the next couple of weeks, after his funeral, people kept talking about seeing him at car wrecks, fires, and all the same stuff he used to report on. There were 20 to 30 reports from civilians and members of the force. My uncle didn't buy it. Until the night he and my aunt showed up at our house, pale as paper. We asked him what the hell happened, and he said that he was sitting on the couch in their house watching television. My uncle kept scratching at his ear, over and over. Finally, he turned around and saw Bob standing there. Clear as day. My uncle jumped up, cussed and got my aunt's attention, who turned to see him there too. As soon as they both made eye contact with him, he smiled, turned around, and walked across the living room and out their front door. He also closed the door behind himself after he was gone. At that point, they ran over to our place. My uncle saw him two more times, each time confirming he was looking more worn. My dad concluded that he was decomposing and his ghost was reflecting that process. Every time my ear itches, I get goosebumps.